episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Madi. And to join me in the G-spot for today's episode of The Spicy Life, we have the beautiful, the lovely K-Cola. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> K-Cola is a Grammy-nominated songwriter and founder of Organi Grow Hair Company. All right. She uh, provides everything organic growth for hair um and i use your products so yes, <laughs> you got you got me you got me on your products Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but i had to have you come on the episode um because today we're going to be talking about the fact that all men are not toxic mm. um so before we get started all right before we start getting into that good talk you have to first share when you first fell in love with yourself what was that moment that's the spice breaker Ooh, i love that question um and i watch the podcast i'm a huge fan Yay. so i love hearing other people's answers i'm honestly going to say it was about three months ago Ooh, i know recent a very recent um i always had like an awareness of self and i would say that i had self-love and i knew what self-love was but i didn't really grasp the concept until recently because i didn't have the tools so and by yeah. tools we mean um i don't think i really understood what love truly meant i didn't uh really grasp like what loving yourself really meant and a lot of people will say that they love themselves but love is a verb to me it's yep. an action word yep. and so we'll say that we love ourselves but we do things that are very harmful to ourselves and so um that's why i felt like because over the years i've done a lot of things that were harmful to myself mm -hmm. um and now that i have this awareness i feel that i love myself okay awesome so we're yes. gonna get into what that looks like and how that's demonstrated um love like that you are this you know boss chick and we've grown yeah. we've blossomed yeah. right i found my purpose i feel like you discovered yours as well yeah we have kids we have kids we are full-blown <laughs> mamas that yeah. have been you know married like mm -hmm. this is you know life has happened yeah and seeing you blossom and develop um from one of your first relationships you know in our adolescence to yeah. uh now has been beautiful and then you know one thing i appreciated is when you uh, came to me and you were like, Hey, friendship aside, can I work with you? Yeah. Can you help me? <laughs> help me girl. And I was I like, eh, I know a lot. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to come from an unbiased place and I'm going to try to help my friends, yeah. um, put anything that I know to the side yes. and just focus on, uh, how you think, how you feel, yeah. where you are at now and where you want to go. Right. Yes. Like that was the mindset that I had to yes. take. Um, but also taking into mind from a sensitive place about your past. Yes. So I do want you to share before we start talking about toxicity yeah. um, and deep diving into like what that means. I want you to share some of the tumultuous relationships in, that you have experienced yeah. that have maybe contributed to your definition of toxic. I think it starts with my father. Um, you know, he was very verbally abusive, misogynistic. Um, and although he taught me a lot of amazing things, I think relationship wise, it was just awful. Now, my godfather, Sinbad, on the other hand, was this incredible family man, um, very healthy, poured into me a lot. So I kind of saw a little bit of both growing up. Um, I was molested as a child. Mm -hmm. I was raped at 19. So and I had heard a lot of things, you know, happen to other women. So I had this idea that overall, even though I had this great godfather and I've had amazing like male friends, men were just very harmful to women mm. um my first child's father was extremely abusive both physically and mentally and emotionally um and then after that i think it just kept spiraling yeah um once you get into this like abuse mode it's almost like you keep you get like stuck in that cycle yep so that for me has just been like my cycle over the last 10, 15 years. What was your moment though? Like, right, you're, you're ha you have all these relationships and you're like, okay, <sighs> poor experience after poor experience. Yeah. When were you like, enough is enough. I need to do something about this. Yeah, you know what? And you know what? Let me not say every relationship has been horrible because I've had a couple of really good ones. I think that, um, I like to say this a lot, just because someone is a good person doesn't mean that they're your person. Mm -hmm. And so for a long time, I felt a lot of guilt and shame because I was like, oh, I have this good person. Why am I not madly in love with them? Mm. Um, and so I thought something was wrong with me. And it's just that they weren't my person. But I recognized that they possessed traits that I wanted in my person. So I was able to take that and kind of like say, OK, this is kind of where I want the bar to be. Um, 
I think I got tired of like people used to say like, you're not the victim, you're not the victim. And um, even though I do think that like, I don't, I, I started to take on the word survivor, but I don't even like that anymore. Because yeah. like, if something happened to you, it's okay to say that you were a victim from something. However, it's not okay to stay in that and to like, stay in victim mentality like woe is me right I wanted to take my power back and I know that I'm a powerful being and so I was like I have to I have to do something yeah like nobody else is gonna do something nobody's coming to save me I have to save me so I think that was like you know the moment so let's go back to your negative experiences in relationship yeah um I think a lot of people can relate to being with toxic partner after toxic partner yeah what was it about their characteristics that you were drawn to? Something about Mm -hmm. them was a common denominator that you were attracted to. Yeah. And that's that accountability is a tough thing, but it's also helpful. Um, I, I think I liked to save people or I, well, okay. To be real, like abusers don't necessarily, it's not like they're just, they come out and slap you on the first day. Right. Mm -hmm. Like normally they're very charming. They're very loving. And you were teaching me a lot about this, like to pay attention to people who are doing too much. Yeah. They love bombing you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the beginning. Um, and so I had to become more aware of like, I didn't have good discernment. I could say that I can acknowledge I didn't have good discernment. I was very naive. And because I have good intentions and I live in like this dreamlike world, I thought that other people were like me. Mm-hmm. And so when they were doing things, I thought it was genuine. Mm. Um, and that it wasn't. It was literally like, <laughs> let me get you wrapped up in my circle yeah. so that you don't want to leave no matter what I do. And so I did notice that it was like these guys who would be like super charming and loving in the beginning and they get me and then they try to control me mm. or, you know, they didn't want me to dress a certain way or talk to certain people. So um, that plus I was codependent. Mm from my father you know uh, a lot of people who have these issues with their father become codependents because they're always looking for love or they're always looking for people to like validate them yep. so um i was you know looking for that and if somebody didn't like accept me i it would like m- make me want to get them to accept me more yep. <laughs> it's yep. like it literally double is, time it's an addiction i think yeah. like it literally is this thing where you're like you don't like me. Why don't you like me? Like, please like me. Or they'll act like they like you a lot in the beginning and then they'll turn it on you and that gets you addicted too. So that was kind of the common denominator. I also, I'm an empath. So I felt a lot for people who had gone through a lot in their childhood. And another one of the common denominators I saw was that they had issues with their mothers. Mm. Um, All of them had like these really horrible toxic relationships with mom and so even though they liked having women around or sleeping with women they could not respect women like it was never like this you know so they would try to get me and sleep with me and be with me but they could never show like the respect so those were kind of some of the I think what you're you tapped on a lot of things that a lot of women can relate to right when it comes to certain qualities or characteristics or how someone shows up because it's always like well they didn't start off that way you know the first two weeks they were this way or the first month they were this way and we're constantly working to try to get back in their good graces or their favor again to get them to be back to that person that they first initially portrayed themselves to be yes so we get caught in that trap i think that what you hit on um towards the end of your point though about really paying attention to a man's respect for a woman and how he feels about women. Yes. Not how he feels about you, but how he feels about the actual female species, all right? And a, a spicy tip for you guys is to ask a guy, what do you love about women? Make him actually, one, define what love is to him. See if it's the same definition of your as yours. And then two, ask him to articulate bullet points or list out I love these 10 things about women and see if he can really share like the things that he admires, that he adores about them, not just why well, only like this about good women or I only like this about yes. you. No. Do you honor us? Do you worship us? Do you cherish our bodies? Do you cherish our mind? Do you love uh, our emotions? Do you enjoy what we bring to the table when it comes to our, our nurturing spirits? Like he needs to be able to clearly articulate 
what he likes about us. I agree. And if he can't and he's just like, uh, I mean, you know, y'all are sexy. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, sir, we let's go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? What women have been in your life and how have they influenced your perception of us? Absolutely. So I love that you're saying like you are now woke to this and you were paying attention to this. Yeah. And that was something that you noticed, right? It was like a pattern within these gentlemen. Yeah. Um, when it comes to being able to, you know, and, and let me highlight this point. I remember specifically, and I bring it up to you to this day and you're like, there was more to this than what you're saying. There was points when you were hurt that I would recognize your posts based on your emotions day to day. Mm -hmm. Like I could see when you were speaking negatively mm -hmm. about how you felt about men and mm -hmm. when you were speaking positively and how you felt about love and relationships. And it stood out to me that somebody had sent me a post about you. Um, and I think this was early on when we first started working together and you were like, man, all men cheat. If they want um, other women, they just need to um, let me know that they want an open relationship. And like, you know, I'll, I'll consider it. Like, let's just do that thing because, you know, men aren't going to be faithful anyways. Like, what's the point? That to me was coming from a voice of someone who was hurt, mm -hmm. not someone who really wanted to share her partner with the rest of the world, but someone who has been disappointed by men, someone who has been um, not just disappointed, but also betrayed and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, heartbroken. Mm -hmm. And I felt like you were coming from your wounded feminine, not from your natural feminine and what you were seeking. Just for clarity, I, I don't like to generalize, generalize as all, I don't believe that all men cheat. I don't believe that, um, all men are unfaithful. I don't believe that all men are poly. I do believe that that's also something women do. Women cheat, um, some women want to be poly. And so at the time, I think my thing was just like, be honest, mm -hmm. was really adamant about honesty and what it is that you want. I, you know, a lot of people claim they're in monogamous relationships and they're really in poly relationships and don't even know it. And so at the time, my feeling was I would just rather you be honest. Like I if you want 20 other just tell me so that I'm able to make a decision yep, from an educated place mm -hmm. yeah because I don't like that our choice gets taken away um and also allow me the space to also live in that I don't think it's fair when men are like okay well I'm Polly and you have to be mono, mm -hmm. mono to me I don't that's ridiculous so I was yes absolutely hurt during that time and I think healing is like a lifelong process yep. so there are still things that I'm healing from but ultimately I do want to be in a monogamous relationship and I am in a monogamous relationship <laughs> what's that I'm sorry I didn't hear you um say it louder for the people on the back I am in a monogamous <laughs> relationship um but I was open to the other idea as mm -hmm. well as long as it was fair I'm all about balance and people being fair so that's the space that I was coming from. But I'm very, <laughs> very happy <laughs> to be. We're going to get to this like happy relationship. <laughs> uh, we're going we're gonna to get there. Yes. Uh, but I love that you are being transparent in um, where, where you were at in that space. Right. Yeah. And like the reason why I'm addressing it is because oftentimes uh, when it comes to relationship and it comes to compromise, yeah. if one of our core values or something that we really appreciate is commitment, mm. if a partner comes at us and they're like, hey, I don't value commitment. Can you be open to not valuing it? Us as women want the relationship so bad that we will start to consider things that weren't our original core values yep. in order to mold or mer merge or bend and become this person that he now wants, right? This person that now he desires and by any means necessary, I'm going to make this relationship work. So let me consider things that I wouldn't normally consider or that I don't even want to do, yep. right? And I'm not talking about um, my swinging community because uh, I applaud anyone's lifestyle that stands true in who they are and when they actually are doing what they want mm -hmm. when it comes to relationships when it comes to sex when it comes to love and when it comes to their choices but when we are doing it to appease someone who doesn't love us at we as we are Facts. or for the values that we possess we then become resentful because we have now opened ourselves to Pandora's box when it wasn't something we wanted to begin with and maybe didn't show us the light even after we tried it. Yeah, that's something you taught me. So the guy that I was telling you about before I met this guy <laughs> and you were like, girl, no, he is not it. He's not the one. 
<laughs> X-day on he the mayonnaise, not, okay? <laughs> it was the same thing. It was like me saying like, oh, well, maybe I could. And you were like, girl, no, that is not it. Like you want this and this guy clearly wants this. So I'm very grateful that you showed me that because it helped me like hold out yeah. for someone better. Like yeah. it truly does work. Now, the thing was, was, Yes, I want commitment, but the ultimate thing I wanted was honesty. So again, I was yeah. open to the idea as long as there was respect. But I also think Polly can get very messy. There's like a lot of different energies and things like that. So ultimately, yes, I did want commitment. Um, I think at different times, sometimes people can change. So, mm -hmm. but I but I agree with you. Like we should not veer off from what our values are yeah and i think it's fair to say people do evolve right yeah. you can say you know i i want commitment but you know what now maybe i'm tired of this relationship or i'm tired of experience com commitment and so now i want to try you know being open or but what i don't think is fair is when you have never gotten your yes. need met and yes. then you're like f it let yeah. me throw my need out so that that way I can make this work. Yeah, and I think a lot I'm of people do that. Or yeah. thirsty or Correct. I'm impatient or whatever. Impatient. All yeah. those things that you're listing. Yeah. Um, you touched on a previous relationship and there's a few that we could like unpack right now or, you know, what was behind them. But I think that also times, uh, often we are guilty of ignoring red flags. Yeah when it comes to the relationship because we want companionship so bad we do. it's not even so much that we want this amazing incredible specimen of a man we love the way he thinks we love the way he feels the way that he yeah. leads usually it ain't the person that we are infatuated with yeah. it is the companionship and maybe even his resume that we want to fit into the box that we are trying to place them in. I see that a lot. I see the resume thing a lot. Like, oh, he checks all the boxes and like the boxes are ridiculous. Like, why did you, who picked those boxes for you? Like, he went to Yale. Like, girl, who cares? Like, does he want a family? Does Is he respectful? So it's, but see, the thing is, is like a lot of people don't have you. And that's why it's so important for you to have oh, the I space that you that. have. And uh, <laughs> Your YouTube, because the education was important. When I was younger, you know, when I had my first baby, I didn't know what red flags were. Yeah. There were so many red flags right off the bat with this man. Yeah. And I, but I, I didn't know, like, he had on a suit and he would quote the Bible and, like, he bought me flowers. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, like, oh, this is a good man. He paid for all the homies to eat. He I did. remember. <laughs> you were there. I was being good. You were there, girl. <laughs> no, like, but there were so many other things. And you taught me, like, to look at one thing I think that I used to think was, like, and I know I'm special, but <laughs> <laughs> all of us think we're so special and it's not going to happen to us. Yep. And that's not the case. Like, I do think that when you do meet your person, they can make you like want to be better. And there are certain because I've seen it and yeah. I've done it myself. Right. But your core character is like literally who you are. Yeah. And if you are uh, an abuser or if you're an alcoholic or whatever, like, girl, he's not going to change for you. He may try. I don't care how big your booty is. It's not gonna like it doesn't. He can matter. try, but then we now take on the responsibility of getting yes. him to change, and that's a lot. And uh, so I am a firm believer, though, that people can grow. Yeah. But I think there's a difference between um, pouring into yourself, learning, taking in that knowledge, and evolving into you know the best version of yourself. There's a huge difference between self growth and then also needing someone to fully change who they are at their core. Yeah. And oftentimes we're trying to get someone to be a good person yes. when we realize they're not a good yeah. person. And that's why like, you know, I, I always go through the pizza, but the exercise that I have you do of like, okay, what do I need this person to be at the core? Like, what do I define as a good person? Mm -hmm. When they honor that and they match that, we then don't have to train them to be that. We just yeah. have to focus on, can I teach this person how to fulfill my needs in this way, right? Yeah. Like the sauce. Yeah. So I think when it comes to the red flags, identifying those early on is key um, and not trying to rationalize them. Yeah. Because one thing that we speak often to is you would be like, because you're such a person who wants to look for the best in people, you would be like, look, I know he's an ex murderer, but God <laughs> forgives. And like, girl, literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, you'd be like, what if he, you know, what if, what if I yeah, just turned the other cheek? Oh, no. and, and I know that's extreme. I'm totally just joking. She wasn't with any ex murderers, mm -hmm. but it would be something, you know, uh, as 
as simple as him, you know, maybe not taking care of his previous kids or like Ooh. not contributing financially to like needs being met in yeah. the household, like basic things like that, that you would always have excuses for. And I think us as women, we will, because we want someone so bad, try to turn this negative thing into a positive yeah. and then call it like positive thinking or, you know, affirmations or pouring love into people. And the truth of the matter is, is like, no, you're taking a negative, trying to make it a positive. Yeah. This is not something that we can fully alter. This yeah. is a red flag. You know what else I learned, though, is like, um, OK, there is such thing as like good and, and bad or whatever. But the, but also a lot of the things that we do, for example, a lot of girls may think a guy who goes out all the time is not a good man. That to me is not the definition of a good or a bad man. It's just his preference. And what I learned is you have to have compatibility in mm -hmm. your preferences. For sure. Because, um, you know, for example, I love to do yoga and I could be with somebody who doesn't like to do yoga. And then I'm constantly like, babe, do you want to do yoga? Or I'll feel bad that I'm doing yoga by myself when I could just find somebody who actually likes to do those, the things that I like to yeah. do and we won't argue about it. Um, or they won't like think I'm nagging because I'm asking them to do these things. Um, but I definitely think that I had this savior complex where I would see somebody who exhibited, exhibited, like they had this great potential, but they exhibited other traits. And I'm like, well, I can get them to, you know, I can love them into being this. a good person. Yeah. And it's <laughs> like, I, you can't do that. You literally can't love somebody into it's actually the opposite. I The people have to go through challenges in order for them to change. Like that's character building, not, you know, coddling them and holding their hand, especially men. <laughs> so, yeah. That's where I was going wrong. I was like, oh, I'll rub your feet. I'll cook for you. I'll like. Well, you were operating from a place of if I treat you at this high superior level of excellence, you will then see my worth and then treat and me your worth. and reciprocate yeah. my excellence. Right. Yes. Like you were like, you will see yes. the value that I bring and then honor me the way that I honor you. Yep. But the problem is, is when they aren't honorable men yeah. that you are trying to now make rise to the occasion and operate from your same vibration there's always this tug of war, mm -hmm. right? If they don't, if if they're not coming into the relationship already vibrating from a positive frequency and now you are trying to like pull them up, they usually wind up dimming your light. They usually wind up bringing you down and now you don't recognize who you are anymore. You don't like who you are anymore At and all. now you have become more like them. Yep, facts. Versus them coming over to the light and being more like you. No facts. And so when you are truly in love with yourself, when you really truly are happy and you were like, look, this is, I love who I am and I love and I know what I have to offer, you will not accept someone who does not see you right. for all of your greatness yes they honestly and and this is the thing that a lot of people have a hard time letting go of partnership when they really want the person so bad is that like it's not rejection in the sense of like this person doesn't want me and doesn't think I'm good enough to love me the way that I deserve. Yeah. It's more of this person's incapable. They haven't risen to your level of consciousness. They Literally. they can't comprehend love the way that you do. If you are operating with love at an eight, they need to be with someone who loves at a five because they're loving at a five. And Absolutely. you should be with someone else who loves at an eight. Like let that person go and find someone who is equally yoked with you. Yeah. But we won't do that. Yeah. We will try to hold on and yeah. hold on and hold on. So the place where we start now behaving at a five versus, you know, in a level eight. Yeah. And when you really love yourself, the other thing is, is that you also attract and be able to recognize. It's more than just attraction. You also be able to recognize someone who loves like you love yes. and who's capable of loving you the way that you do. Yes. Right. You won't settle. Yes. But you also <laughs> will recognize and not miss out on someone mm -hmm who can love you the way that you deserve. That's so key that you said that because I feel like even when I was at my lowest, I was attracting everything. I was attracting higher vibrational men. I was attracting lower vibrational men, but I was not on the frequency to like accept, you know, the, and now I'm just like, Ooh, this is, <laughs> <laughs> I love it here. But no, you're right. Like, but sometimes those higher vibrational men, um, 
we'll come along and see like that your self-worth or your self-esteem is low. Yep. And then they say, hmm, you know what? I don't think I want to necessarily sign up for, for this. this project. That's a fact. Let me go get me yep. a woman who truly loves herself, who yep. truly honors herself yes. and be done with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And sometimes as women, we think that like, no, they're just going to see how great I am. And if they love me enough, then I will love myself too. And yeah. it, that really is not the case. It's like not. you will repel the men who actually worship themselves and have high value yeah so it's really important that we get our ish together and love ourselves the way that we appropriately should and what i mean by that because you said earlier that it's a verb right mm-hmm. love is a verb love, mm-hmm. love is shown through actions and behavior yeah. um reason being you guys just to explain is because while you may think that love is an emotion Based on the Bible's definition, um, you know, love is kind. The, the the thing that when it comes to love is in order to be those things, you have to demonstrate it. So that's why it's a behavior. That's why it's a verb. Mm-hmm. Because you can't just say, I am this thing or I feel this way without projecting it and showing it, without demonstrating to someone so that the belief system can kick in and it be truth, yes. right? So when we speak to it being shown, there's specific demonstrations that they will do or specific things that you're looking for that you're like, okay, that felt good, but that also was consistent. Consistency. (laughs) That's another thing you taught me, like being patient, allowing time, the consistency, you know, even again, like how they were before me, how did they treat others? Has this been like a lifetime thing or did they just start like, are you the guinea pig? Yeah. (laughs) Oh, no more guinea pigs. (laughs) I think that to to highlight one thing that you did that I think is like great was you recognized, okay, it's out of control at this point. I keep making bad choices. Let me get the help that I need. And oftentimes what happens is we start spiraling, right? We get like pulled further and further and further, like out to sea, let's say. And then we're now drowning and we're lost and we're scared and we will grab onto anything that comes our way because we think that we're drowning when really like we just need that life vest that you know lifesaver that comes and just lets us know like hey calm down it ain't that serious like you have all the tools that you already need to swim back to shore you can do it yeah but when you are so confused and you've been hurting for so long you're it's not clear it's not you know what else I love that you taught me was like to date because I've been, <laughs> that's something so basic to no date. <laughs> date like no like I literally have been in back-to-back relationships and um I was made to feel guilty for like to date mm-hmm. um everyone tries to make women feel a certain way about like seeing multiple people and I got to see like what's really out there like, yeah I got to see what I kept seeing was like okay this guy is good oh, wait, this one is, wow, like, oh, wait, uh, you know what I mean? And it's like, I didn't, where normally I would just go for the first guy who was like, you know. Nice to you. Yeah, like, I actually got to, oh, my God, I can't even. (laughs) (laughs) We gonna get there, we gonna get there. I know, but, like, it's, it's the simple, something as simple as date and stop feeling guilty about exploring, like, what's out there. But I think because you are someone who, prefers relationship right you prefer Mm -hmm. what you believed to be Mm -hmm. the commitment or the security of the relationship that dating to you was kind of like uh i don't feel like putting myself out there i I don't have to juggle these men (laughs) but i think through your experiences and what a lot of women have to understand is like one there's a strategy behind dating it's 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 not to just weed out you know who you don't want but it's also to learn yourself through the process and how you show up in relation to different types of men so you can relate it even to like let's say salsa dancing where you have multiple partners that are spinning you around each man's energy based on their confidence or you know how they lead Mm -hmm. is going to dance with you different they're going to take you you know they're going to dip you different they're going to spin you (laughs) different their footwork is different their strength and how they pick you up is different Mm -hmm. and so you get an opportunity To see, okay, I like the way this guy leads me or I don't, but I do like the way this guy leads me or I like this guy's energy or I like when these guys do this. And it gives you a variety, but also a demonstration of, you know, I want this, 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 and this, and this is what works best with who I am as a person. Yeah, you can't know your favorite food until you try all the foods. Like, how can you, if you've only had Italian food, how can you know that Italian food's your favorite food? You have to try Japanese, Mexican, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's... 
But this brings me to the other point that you were really you were really distraught over, which is you guys are going to crack up. Um, <laughs> she was so scared that she would have to settle for someone ugly. When I told I her, <laughs> when I told her we're going to date and uh, we're going to, you know, do the pizza, the crust, the sauce, the toppings. Toppings is the visual aesthetic. Sauce is the way they treat you. And the crust is their core values. Yo. She was like, so you're saying I'm going to have to compromise the <laughs> toppings, right? I'm going to have to compromise the aesthetics. And I'm like, no. You're going to get like three out of five, but it's not going to be all five. It's not going to be perfect. I got perfect, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I am really good, you know. Like, no. um, but you were so nervous that like a good person could also not find your value and not be as attractive as you want. Because attractive people don't tend to work on their character. Like men and women, like women will wa be beautiful, walk in with a stank attitude, have no spirituality, no conversation, you know? So I've experienced that the men who are extremely attractive, like they didn't work on character building because all they had to do was walk in a room and women would throw themselves at them. And I'm like, I'm not like that. Mm -hmm. Like I want to be full and complete and whole. And so just, you know, being on this planet for 37 years and seeing all of this, diff I'm like, where are the attractive men that have like, they're good inside too. I was, no, I really was. I was mortified. I know. And, and, and we had to take a pause. We had to take a beat. And I'm like, hey, if, instead of you focusing so much on going for or yeah. the attractive guy, yeah. let's just focus on you mastering a good person yeah like I just wanted you to focus on dating just mm -hmm. men who were good, good people. guys because yes. for so long you had been in this like reoccurring pattern of toxic dude after toxic dude after yep. toxic dude yep. right and so I'm like some of them were ugly though <laughs> <laughs> some of them were even toxic worse and now ugly. we're compromising everything and you can't be ugly and not treat me right, right and not be a good person I'm sorry what are ripping. we doing I was tripping what are we doing mm -hmm. but you wanted relationships so I bad did. and so I just had to get you back to natural feminine self, yes. natural self that said, hey, let me get back to someone just being good the way I'm being good. Yes. And then everything else we can work on after that, right? Mm -hmm. We can help guide them to, you know, providing certain needs that we have. And aesthetically, we could even, you know, help a little transformation there if we need to. But yeah. just get back to a good person. I just wanted you to date good people. Yes. Thank you. What? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> but you guys think that this sounds like basic as fuck. But the truth of the matter is, is it's it's a lot more complicated than you think when you are in a pattern yeah. that you are stuck in. When you cannot get out of um, getting in your own way or you are addicted to toxicity and let's be real as basic as it sounds everybody's basic because everybody's been doing it everybody has literally well, we would all be married right now in yeah, happy healthy relationships everybody has just been chasing people for the wrong things and for like honestly and i've been telling all my friends this too find good, even in friendships find good people who mm -hmm. cares what they drive who they know find good people and it feels so good <laughs> <laughs> okay so why she has this big ass smile on her face <laughs> let's talk about um let's can we can we, can we re reference um some of the red flags from the previous relationship yes. to how we got into this relationship because yes. i made you release yeah. um and by making I, I i i didn't shake her you guys but i could have almost done that she shook the um, room, okay? <laughs> the, i was shook it you wanted to hold on to somebody Man. who you had no business holding on to so uh do you do i have permission to talk about some of his red flags yeah. okay when i tell y'all that this fool not only did not look like the most attractive thing in the world um but the way that he treated her uh was inconsistent when it came to communication sometimes he was in and out but then in addition to that um I'm going to reference the one that had a baby on the way. Mm -hmm. Okay. This man had a woman who was pregnant on the way and she appreciated the honesty. Well, at least he told me. Mm -hmm. Mind you, this man still has to spend time mm -hmm. in Lamaze's class, mm -hmm. nurturing the relationship with the baby's mother mm -hmm. in order to make sure that this kid comes out yeah. good, right? Yeah, like yeah, healthy. Yeah. Yes. Um. So that already right there to me would be, hey, big red flag. Do I want to sign up for someone who has all of this responsibility and also still has to spend time with their ex? Yeah. That right there, for me, knowing what I knew about you and what you wanted was not conducive to what you were trying to grow with someone based on knowing 
some of the insecurities that you were already challenged with. Yep. And certain things can feed your insecurities or certain things can smooth and calm your insecurities. Yeah. And the particular incidences that were coming up were feeding into the beast. They were yeah. feeding into the version of you that was not your best self. But you know what it was? It's like it's like when people get out of jail and they're used to eating the jail food. So then like maybe red lobster sounds like you <laughs> yeah, know what I'm saying delicious. and yep. then and so you're just happy to have the red lobster yeah when really you should be holding out for Mastro's or whatever like there's a level so I before him I had come from super crazy super 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 nuts not even around their children like so I'm looking at him like oh he's honest so he's better than that he's one better at than least. that but that wasn't it either yeah and so I think your analogy of like being so starved, right, that you'll take yes. anything that, you know, is thrown your way better. that tastes, yep. yeah, um, is a great example of like oftentimes what we will do because the other element that adds to it is our belief system. Yes. So while you were telling me and a lot of women, you guys say this as well, like I am love, I am worthy of being loved. Um, you know, I am a great catch. I'm a great woman. The behaviors and yep. the partners that you were choosing were not in alignment with those words. No. Did not demonstrate that at, at all. Because I was willing to still settle. You know? Yep. And thanks to you, I got out of that way quicker than... For sure. <laughs> I like, what are we doing? Yeah. Literally in like a month and a half, two months. It was like where normally things would linger on for years. Yeah. Me. I'm a Taurus. I'm very loyal. Like we... But I'm also disloyal to myself because I'm over here accepting things that are betraying myself to be loyal to somebody else. Yep. So I'm again, I'm very grateful that you taught me how to get out quicker. Yeah. Um, we had to do some exorcism work around that. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> but but seeing your evolution, right, of like yeah. previous relationships from relationships and then to getting to a place where you're now able to take a beat and ask yourself, like, how does this person, you know, show up for me? Yeah. What does that look like on a consistent basis? Yeah. Not just, you know, how they make me feel, yeah. but also are their behaviors making logical sense? Yeah. Can I actually merge my life with this person? Do they actually, you know, are they motivated to make me happy and are they doing things to pour into me and grow me? Yeah. Like, I love that you are now looking at it from that lens, right? Almost like uh, you're, you got out of the sunken place. I did. Um. <laughs> I feel very worthy. Like, I really, I was not... I'm not willing to tolerate the things that I used to. And also I just look at my children and I'm like, I need to be with somebody that my son can look up to yeah. that. My daughters, when they get older, they'll say, Oh, my stepdad was like this. And I have an example. Like that's so important for me. And, you know, I thought about my, my inner child and my young self and how like, you know, there were certain things I couldn't protect myself from as a child. But now that I'm an adult, there is a way to protect her. And that's by doing certain things now and I have not <laughs> over the past years, I had not been protecting my little girl. Yeah. And I wanted to do that for myself now. So. Well, to the point that I was saying about belief, yeah. while I think that you thought you were or you would say that you were like, great. Yeah. You not only weren't in relationship with people who I think worshipped and yeah. honored you, yeah. but I don't think that you believed that you could be with somebody who loved you the way that you deserved. So yeah. that's why you were behaving the way that you were. Yep. It's more than just like the yep. affirmations on a daily basis. It's also, do I believe that I can have the kind of person that I want? And if you really believe that, then you will not settle for anything that's less than that. That's very true. So I love that you're at this place now. One thing that was also challenging for you and has been in previous relationships is that you are most successful than most of the men you're with. Very true. That's another thing that I think is really hard for our generation of women. Like yeah. our parents and our parents' parents, they didn't have to rock with this whole, yeah. um, you know, get in the bag, CEO, boss chick, you know, um, that we're all like striving for. Yeah. And that now you have, you know, also attained. I saw your little Forbes post. Mm -hmm. um, by little, I mean the gigantic. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. Multi-millionaire, yeah. you know, organic girl has been great yeah. for you. Yeah. But like getting in relationship with men who may be somewhat what, intimidated by that or Haters. I've had Damn. whole. Okay, we just don't call them haters. I've had whole jealous, like they'll pretend like they're supportive, but they're honestly, it really like 
boils their blood mm. that you know I I have my own and I never like I don't try to make them feel there's times where I've like passed my card under the table so that they could feel like mm. you know what I mean like I don't try to make the but no it's like you wanting to borrow my car you wanting to pretend that what I have is yours like all of that while also being jealous of me that's crazy to me like wild so so it, it was probably one made it feel like well i'm not gonna find someone who appreciates what i do or who's yes. gonna respect what i do and you know still stand true and confident in who they are you know that has to be hard though to be with men yeah. who weren't confident in what they were doing i had a major blockage because i was letting fear take over my mind and it was like a lack mindset which is like it's the same thing when it comes to money and abundance mindset yep. you have to believe that there is enough and that there's infinite yep and i was having a hard time because i was reading statistics or looking at some of my friends or you know even social media will fuel a lot of that shoot i had sure. to unfollow <laughs> some pages because i'm like oh this is not where i'm trying to go and even though this may be the truth for the masses i don't want this to be my truth so mm. i have to change what I'm reading, what I'm saying, and all and that's why things started to change with yep. what I was saying because even though I still believe men have a lot of work to do, as do women, yep. but statistically, men have a lot of work to do, I didn't want that to be my man in my reality and yep. my life. And even though, you know, me I'm I'm in the one percent, right? I made that my reality. I didn't let the ninety nine percent determine my reality of where I'm gonna go financially. I had to adopt that method of thinking when it came yep. to relationships i want to be in the one percent i'm going to be the anomaly i'm going to find somebody who loves like me i'm going to find a really good man who respects women and that's just what it's going to be yeah <laughs> so to your point though um yes you you know it's an you're an anomaly but the truth of the matter is is like people can achieve the love that they desire if they put in the work yeah they change you know patterns that they are stuck in yeah and i think too you knew that you needed accountability partner like you yes. knew you needed you're like i can't do this on my own no. <laughs> you're like i no. need an accountability partner because that was too nice she really had to like be on my head like girl i would think things that are like normal to you were like extra for me like oh my god i can't but you're like girl please He's supposed to do that. Yes. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, There are certain sad. standards here. Come on. Yeah. And so I think that's why, because we stay true to the, if I release this person, if I sacrifice um, the idea or the notion that this is my last chance, or if I Ugh. sacrifice yep. <laughs> um, these things that are not serving me. And what I mean by that is sometimes it's ego. Sometimes it's fear. Sometimes you have to sacrifice. Yeah um uh your uh, anxious attachments like there's different things that you have to maybe sometimes compromise or sacrifice to the universe in order for the universe to deliver what it is that you are asking for yeah and oftentimes we don't want to sometimes sacrifice those things because it's such a part of our identity we're yeah. so used to having been in that mindset for so long or yeah. in that energy or experiencing those feelings for so long mm -hmm. that it's on rotation and yeah. that's how it becomes a, like a consistent vibration for us. So I love that you were able to, you know, pull yourself out. And now we are in a healthy relationship. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit mm -hmm. about we, mm -hmm. we, we threw the others away because we were like, <laughs> no, 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 this isn't for me. Yeah. And now we have someone who you said, you know, is is like minded. He enjoys yeah. similar things to you, which I think is very important. Shared interests, Right. I think you should have your own. But I also think that you should have shared interests with your partner as well so that yeah. you guys can do some things together to have recreational intimacy. Yeah. So share a little bit We're about. Obsessed. <laughs> We're literally obsessed with each other. Like it's crazy like the moment like whenever we greet each other there's like this thing where we're just like breathing for a second oh my like, gosh we literally do <laughs> breath work together and there's energy that comes out of our entire being <laughs> so <laughs> extra still it's literally <laughs> like it's insane and it is so otherworldly and like diamond it's just everything that i prayed for and more it's beyond anything that i could have fathomed my wildest dreams like I had to release control to the universe and allow it to bring me there because this is genuinely like the most incredible thing I've ever experienced, like relationally. But I thought 
majority of men were toxic. They are, but no. this one is an okay. angel. He's from the planet. So, of- <laughs> um, th- so this is the purpose of this episode, okay? To dispel the myth that majority, because she doesn't want to say all, but the, the belief is that majority of men are toxic. I am a firm believer that that is untrue, Girl. okay? Reason being mm. is because a multitude of men like your boo exist. Mm. However, when you operate in a place where you're so focused on identifying those negative characteristics or traits that you actually gravitate to, right? Mm -hmm. Because there was common denominators in all of them. Mm -hmm. You were selecting them based on certain things that you were accustomed to or that you thought you were looking for. Mm -hmm. So you were focused on, you know, seeing those men. But when we changed the lens, when we sh- we, we shifted gears and we're like, let's just focus on good person. Right. Once we get that, then we can start to pick the most attractive person out of all the good people. But yeah. let's just focus like there. Yeah. You're now looking at people from a different lens and having a different experience. And it's not that there's only a few and Ashley got the last of I the didn't good get the men. last y'all. I didn't get the last. But you're still speaking as if like there's only 10 left. I I think in general good people are rare nowadays. I think that a lot of people would rather work on getting money, how they look and a whole bunch of other things rather than like their character or their spirituality and things like that. So Men and women, you know, I just think that it's very rare to find people who are well-rounded, good character. Okay, yes, and, right, that's that's what you feel, but yeah. your definition of what's good character may be different from someone else's definition of what's good character. That's true. So while you see someone as, yeah. you ain't good for me, sir, yeah. there is another woman who is equally yoked and in alignment with them no, for sure. that would be a good pairing. Yeah. And so, and it's not to say that you guys, you know, are, are, it's not to say that there's a spectrum of goodness, but there are a variety of definitions in what we define as a good person. I just mean abuse, lying and cheating manipulation, any type of, because lying, cheating, manipulation is all abuse. That's emotional abuse. So I mean, in terms of like being abusive, um, mentally, spiritually, or emotionally, it just, seems like there are a lot of people who are like that who don't want to be honest um who aren't very self-aware who aren't ready to work on themselves um but i do acknowledge that there is now you know this group of and this awakening happening where people are trying to work on these things as well so and i think that you're also speaking to a certain community though right yeah. so like if we're speaking to um the spiritual community that very much believes in the metaphysics of the world that's a certain community. That's a, yeah. a small pocket, actually, of the world versus the 7 billion people who yeah. are on Earth. Not all of them are operating on that same vibration. So the, so I say this to say that, like, you have to define um, what you believe to be good. Good. Yeah. And anything that you're referring to, yes, uh, abuse, um, yep. lying, cheating, manipulating, mm-hmm. narcissism, all those things – can be toxic traits. Yeah. But to say that majority men are, are like that, I believe that when you do the work and you allow yourself to experience people over and over and again because you don't give up just because you had a bad experience, you yeah. keep going, you keep going, yeah. you will then start to grow your team of positive experiences yeah. with men, right? Yeah. So like say um, you and your boo uh, – irreconcilable differences and you guys parted ways yeah the the party wouldn't stop here we would continue for sure to to the five other great men that we want to experience in the world because i know that they exist so you would have now a pool of people of good people that you've now experienced versus being on a repeat Mm -hmm. right of negative person negative negative person negative person Mm -hmm. so if we think about it as your bank account you have only had a lot of withdrawals not a lot of deposits but if you only fucked with men who were making deposits you would be like ball oh i'm balling so i think it's just around um mindset and the way that we operate but also what we allow and permit to touch us to experience us right and oftentimes we will say that we're not allowing um ourselves to experience these negative things anymore uh you know, I have to guard my energy. I have to protect my energy. But sometimes I think that's just an excuse to not have to experience and continue dating and getting back in the ring and being 
in alignment with your partner. Yeah. You don't change who you are. You don't shift who you are. You can recognize and be up on game. Yeah. And you can say, I will not tolerate or accept this, but I'm still going to be true to me being the loving person that I am. And yeah. until someone loves me the way that I want, I'm going to keep going. Yeah. Versus I'm going to yeah. shut this love and light down. Yeah. And just settle for the worst. Yeah, no, I'm never with that. Uh, for me, it's boundaries, not walls. I'm not here to build a wall. Like, I am here to just see what fits best for me and I want to continue to be a light and I, I don't want to be around friends or or be in a relationship that dims that like yeah. it's just not for me um and when the time is right you guys will get couples counseling yeah so <laughs> when the time is right you guys will um do the work in order to sustain the engagement or yeah. the marriage yeah. or the growth never stops yeah. right just because you now found your person <laughs> Um, doesn't mean that you stop evolving and expanding Absolutely. as who you are yeah. as a good person. That's And that's what I love about us now. I mean, from day one, the conversation has been growth, sharing YouTubes. We're reading um, a book together called True Love. It's a beautiful book that teaches you how Yay. to love. And like, he's read The Way of the Superior Man. I've read The oh, Way yes, of the Superior Man. Say. Like, yeah, like he- Love that he's all, on it. Yes, all of these things he was reading before me and I was reading before him. And so when we came together, it was just this beautiful melting pot because now we're doing it together. Yeah. And like from day one, we wanted to, to work. It wasn't like, oh, we've arrived. We're always trying to figure out how to grow together. So- it's safe to say, though, that this man is making a deposit. He's leaving an imprint, right? Girl. This is how <laughs> we change the vibration, yes. though. So if you've experienced now a positive deposit, a positive uh, male figure in your life yeah. who is pouring into you, mm -hmm. we then should be able to retract our statement of majority <laughs> men are toxic. And reason being is... Is because he is starting to and will, as you see, time permit. You may not be there yet. He yeah. will change your belief system. I will say that, and I have great guy friends. I think that because I'm so aware of like what patriarchy has done to the world, meaning nature, mm -hmm. the government, mm -hmm. um, stuff with women, it's not just about in it's I don't have this mindset because of relationships. I have the mindset because I've seen how patriarchy has like mm. affected everything all over. So I think that's that's where it you comes. Be, you believe it to be a man's world. Um, I mean, I do. I believe I believe it to be a white man's world, mm. and I believe that um, you know, because they run government and religion and so many other things. It, it's. You know, there are still places in the world where women women can't drive. We were just able to get bank accounts in 1970. Mm. Like there was a point where if you didn't have a husband, you were looked down upon. Mm -hmm. All of these things, there's been an attack. We still haven't evolved from that yet. Yeah. yeah. There's an attack on, on melanated people and on women. And it's because we are so powerful. And so I think it's important to acknowledge these toxic ways that they've had so that we can try. It's not to just beat them down and say that they're evil demons. Mm -hmm. It's literally to say, hey, guys, this is not working. Can you? like help us can we can we get it together how can we help you get it together yeah so that we all benefit from it because honestly seeing my man and the work that he's done on himself it makes me want to serve him it makes me honor him it makes me look at service and and being submissive as like a good thing yeah. rather than you know where women are looking at submission as like a negative thing they want to buck against. Well, of course you don't want to submit to a man who's unhealthy. Yeah. But when you have a healthy, like I literally like, am. Yes, Sadie. Yes. Anything <laughs> you want, you can have it. Like <laughs> they don't understand that if they just get it together, like literally we will all be in this like utopia. Mm -hmm. It will be so beautiful. For sure. But to to call them out in the way that we are yeah i don't know if that ser serves not our best interest it's right not. so the problem with us <clears throat> going after men whether it be government you know politics where wherever these powerful men are that are or unpowerful men that are just putting themselves in positions of control yes anytime we use negative language yep. in order to try to convince them to be yeah. better that's never going to work because yeah. if their image says I am great, we are going against their self image, which then ego kicks in and says, this person is stupid. They are inaccurate and they are wrong. Yeah. I don't see myself as that. They are the problem, not me. Yeah. That's what happens with racism. It's like, that's what happens in relationship. When yeah. you call your man, anything yeah. outside of what he believes, yeah. he's going to buck back at you. Yeah. 
that so so what's the solution to you know because i do believe there are times where we've tried to like coddle them or love them into change like what is the solution so i don't think that it's as simple as um us as uh women all gathering together mm-hmm. to <laughs> um to try to take these evil you know men down mm-hmm. i think what it looks like is us as women channeling um our feminine energy mm-hmm. and using our ability to love seduce encourage and mm. um a, a little bit of brainwashing yeah um in order to channel like our powers from within right our feminine powers to guide these men to a healthier place yeah. and i don't mean um allowing them to take advantage or manipulate when they're mistreating you we throw them away what i'm saying though is by us um, making them the enemy and demonizing them, right. we're never going to be able to get them on our side. And we actually want their power. Yeah. Like if, when we have the power of a man, that's double our power. Yeah. I, I like knowing the power that I have over my partner because when I'm pulling certain strings, right, I'm st- twice as strong as I could be in solitude. Yeah. Yeah. So knowing that I'm not going to get anywhere with him if I call him out his name or if I disrespect him because that goes against who he believes himself to be. Yeah. I have to use my feminine power to pour love, to affirm. Every now and then you got to flex. Yeah. But not in a way that is making him feel, yes, like as if he is a horrible person. I agree. I think that what something you said is key is like to be able to walk away. A lot of women and I was not able to walk away. So I would become... And you said this earlier, I would kind of become like them. Yeah. So my first child's father was extremely verbally abusive and I took that on Mm. and I started becoming verbally Mm -hmm. abusive and I would like snap back. If I tried that with the man I'm with now, we would not be together. Like it does not, that's not where it's at. So we as women have to be willing to like, leave yeah like let the and like if the if we all did that collectively collectively they would have no one to turn to when they'd have to get it together <laughs> but unfortunately we, but that's the problem we're rewarding yes. bad behavior yeah. oftentimes by staying or by allowing them to soak up yes. our energy and light when it's like you have to understand when a man cannot move when you do not have a power to move a man i need to walk away dip get out but I agree with you. It is through our feminine ways yes. that we will move mountains yeah. for sure. Because we really are that powerful. But yeah. oftentimes we have been convinced that we don't have the power that we have. Yes. And we let these men just like run us. Yeah. So I think that the the initiative or the, the goals that you're saying that you have in place, I think we change our verbiage and our language right because yeah. i like the explanation that you were giving of like what you have seen in the world and why you believe this toxicity exists but to label them you yeah. know majority puts men on the defense and now they don't become our allies absolutely it does yeah. so i think that we use the word of maybe you know he's wounded he's in his wounded masculine um and we are in our healed feminine. And unfortunately, we're not compatible with one to masculine. Uh, I will try to see if through my love there's some healing. But once I identify that it cannot be, I am out. I'm out. I am out. Yep. So operation heal these wounds in masculine. And then get out. <laughs> operation get out. Are y'all, are y'all with me on this? <laughs> Ashley, I love it. Okay. I want you to talk a little bit about um, organic grow before we go because okay. uh, I think it's so boss like what you're doing and I love Thank the you. product. You For a long time you were saying you need to use this product, you need to use this product. Yeah. And I was like, no, I, I've tried every hair product. There's nothing really that's going to like work on my hair. But yeah. then when I did, I was like, okay, fine. Let me... By I actually love it. Thank you. Um, I did not think that the product was gonna work on my hair. I'm ser- <laughs> I am serious. I know. I tried to tell her for years. I'm y'all. always and so this is I the mind. I was in a negative vibration. Yeah. Hair products never work on me. My hair is always dry yeah. and frizzy. The, yeah. You know the curls aren't popping. Yeah. Um, but to then give it a chance and trust you and actually like love 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 it. I was shocked like super surprised now I see why it does as well as it does yeah for sure thank you yeah I mean I believe that I'm a healer and I believe that I'm healing people's hair and their just their overall well-being through my company um that's been like my purpose my whole life I thought it was going to be through music and and some at some times it is but right now it's in this space and so I've been able to literally help people with postpartum hair loss um 
all kinds of hair loss that you get even through like your immune system taking different vitamins and drugs and things like that um so this has been amazing because it caters to your texture and your porosity which is something that a lot of other brands don't do yeah so. love 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 it I, it's yeah, like crack for me you. now because i need she ba- pulled I need up to my house <laughs> <laughs> we have 32 ounces now but she put up to my house one day she's like girl i'm out i have to get some <laughs> Literally. Because you understand curly hair. It's like every time I have to re-wet it to start from scratch or I need yeah. to spray it down in yeah. order to, you know, do my hair. So I run yeah. through product like crazy yeah. because I want it to always look fresh, you know, when I'm going somewhere yeah. or doing something. Also, you being a mom, I mean, it's so important that you're using like non-toxic. Yeah, that's true. Organic, you know, things like that. A lot of these products are causing cancer and just different hormonal issues with women. So... I'm proud of I'm, I'm proud of the work that you're doing. You. I'm sure your man is as well. He is. He uh, loves it. How he does uses he handle it. how does he handle you being a, a boss chick? Um, you know, you know what I love about him? He's so calm and like patient and like he's so supportive. Like I, I spoke at an event last night and he came through and he was just so proud and he just he's he's a firefighter. So um his whole like he dedicates his whole life to helping others yeah. and I feel like I operate from that same space. So I think it's just very aligned. Like he loves the products. He loves everything that I do. And it just, it's just so aligned. <laughs> it's so beautiful. So, look at y'all. Look at hey baby. I know you're going to watch. <laughs> hey boo. <laughs> Shout out to her boo. And I think that um, we've been taking proper measures, right? Like you didn't just deep dive or rush into this. Like we released previous relationships and then yeah. um you it, had me write a journal yeah. entry she had me write down everything that like I've been through and how what it's taught me yeah and it wasn't just like a bashing session I yep. love that you had me like write down what it taught me and then I I ripped it up and burned it yep. and we like, did a whole released. exorcism yeah so that was very helpful and and now it has you now being accountable though to like okay I'm not going to repeat certain things At I've all. released them I've forgiven yeah. myself for them yeah and now I can move into this relationship in a clean space yeah. and make sure that like so being able to also identify right um is this operating from a place of like fear and old, you know, habits or triggers even, or is this really like a red flag where, you know, what is this coming from? Cause oftentimes we will stop trusting ourselves when we've yes. made bad decisions for so long. Yes. We don't know if it's just our anxiety and we're tripping or if he's really doing something that's going to, you know, mess us up. Yeah. One thing that I learned that has been very helpful with that is to literally ask God to show you like who's supposed to be in your life Mm -hmm. and God will literally show you. And And then you got to listen and you have to listen. (laughs) You have to be ready to let go as amazing as this relationship is. And as much as like, I'm so happy, but if something happened and God was like, you have got to let this, I will have to do that. You have to trust. I have to trust and release my own control and my own will. And that's why that scripture that says like, you have to give up your your life to gain your life like I have literally done that and it's wild to release that control but like the bliss that comes from that is something that I can't even explain so I am at that point in my life where I am able to, and ready to give up anything that God is saying like this is not in alignment with where I'm trying to take you right now yeah and I, and I need you guys to be very mindful about that too because if you pray for that if you're like Lord please show me and he shows you we can't excuse certain things right no. his his other girlfriend calls you on the phone let's just right. say and is like hey i've been dating you know your man at the same time that would be the answer that you prayed for and that you asked for what we're not going to do is excuse it and be like well maybe i haven't been showing up for him the way that i should like nope. no god gave you your sign girl yes, <laughs> literally or even when god shows you that this is for you you also have to be in alignment and be ready Facts. for it and you can't let other things try to when i tell you so many things have been thrown at me ever since i got in this relationship oh, to try sure. and like test the girl are you ready i'm like bye like you are not about to mess this yep. up for me yep. like you, you have to be ready. You start to- acting responsible and yes. also grateful, grateful for what you have. Yes. For sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm so happy for you. Thank yes. You. Okay. So you're going to have to share with everybody where they can find your products. Um, if yeah. they want some of your music, where do yes. they go? Um, so I am at Kcola on Instagram and Organic Grow Hair Co. is the website. And my music is on Apple Music, Spotify, iTunes, anywhere that you can download or stream. 
Good. Awesome. And Thank you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mari. Go to the spicylife.com, schedule a free consultation. Also, uh, click and subscribe to this episode, share it with the friends. There you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life.